Hi, this is Kim Constable, CEO and founder of the Work at Home Mums Network, and I am here today with a very special edition of Work at Home Wednesday. Now, you may or may not have heard of Maria Kang. Maria is my very special guest expert today, and I am so excited to interview her because this is gonna be one of the best interviews that we have ever done. Maria is a 32 year old mother of three young kids who is a fitness, I don't wanna say fanatic, but she's extremely fit and she runs home businesses and she is an absolutely inspirational person. Now I wanted to interview Maria and we've been back and forth trying to get the interview sorted and we never really got there. But now with all of the publicity that has gone on recently with the what's your excuse photo, I wanted to interview Maria today to bring her to you, to hear her story so that we can start to get behind the picture of the 32 year old mother, her six pack abs and her three children and get right underneath and figure out who is Maria, what is it that makes her tick and really what started her on her journey. So welcome Maria, I am so pleased to finally get to meet you here today. Thank you, Kip, for having me. Oh, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And I can see your running machine in the background. I think that's so perfect. This this is my office, actually. It's my office slash gym room. So lots of magic has happened on that treadmill. <laughs> I can imagine. I love that you have a treadmill in the background. It's perfect. Before we even discuss that picture, can you please just tell us like, a little bit about Maria? Maria in a nutshell. Well, I'm 32 married to a wonderful husband named David Kassler. I gave birth in 2009, 10, and 11 to three boys, Christian, Nicholas, and Gabriel. Mm. I have, I started a nonprofit for fitness and kids called Fitness Without Borders in 2007, and we generally serve this community in Sacramento, California. And I um, started a mommy, mommy fitness club in 2009 when I first became a mother, um, where we meet up at the park. So I'm very passionate about fitness. A lot of my services um, have been for free, uh, mainly because, you know, I know how it is to struggle and I know how it is to be challenged with your weight. And I was challenged with my weight. So me in a nutshell is, yes, I'm a fitness, I don't want to say fanatic, but I'm an enthusiast and I really feel strongly about the importance of your health. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, we can see that you're glowing in the camera in front of us today. You're, tell us, how did you get started? in working out and keeping fit? You know, my earliest memories of working out is dancing to Let's Get Physical with Olivia <laughs> and John. I don't know if you remember that. I do, I'm 34, video. I'm the same age. Well, no. It was so awesome. Yeah. So I remember that video, it was a lot of fun. Um, but I, I really saw my mom struggle a lot as a kid. You know, um, she, I remember her teaching me, um, she was showing me how she um, gave insulin to herself in her 20s when she became diabetic. Mm -hmm. And I saw her go through many diets and um, and feel a lot of that discrimination too. And it made, it made me fearful about um, taking care of my health because I was, I was susceptible. You know, I have three other siblings who are females and I always had quote unquote, the thicker gene. I never was a skinny girl growing up. So I became more conscious at a young age of um, me becoming um, like my mother. So um, I started working out probably in my, in, when I was in junior high school, just something small, like jumping jacks in the morning. And then in college, I became a personal trainer for a couple of years. And then after that, I just continued my fitness journey as um, in various levels, as a writer, as whatever. But I always maintained a workout of 30 to 60 minutes a day, mm -hmm. um, strength training, cardio. It hasn't really changed much in 10 years since I was a trainer. So it, um, I think that the thing that was most successful for me was the strength training component. Mm, that's amazing. And so your mom, I mean, was she overweight then when you were growing up? Was she... Or was she... Did she, she... You said she was a diabetic, but did she have other health... She was overweight. Things? She was... She never really, you know, she is an amazing woman. You know, she married at a young age. She had four kids in four years. You know, so she, I were very similar, but she never lost the weight after each child. And right. she worked a lot. I mean, she started, my parents started with nothing in the U.S. They met in New Zealand and they came to San Francisco, you know, was on government programs. Um, my mom worked for the state. 
and my dad became, you know, he retired as a sergeant for the um, San Francisco Police Department, but they started with nothing, and they built businesses, you know, they started a care home in 2000, and then five more um, care homes after that, so my mom's a pretty successful entrepreneur, I've always right. seen her excel her professional life, and a hard she worker. never took care of her health, she was always, um, you know, she's my height, and she was always over 200 pounds. Wow. So as you can imagine, that's not very healthy. And it's not because of her genetics so much. She was always a little round, I have to say, ever since she was little, sure. But um, but eating Kentucky Fried Chicken doesn't help, you know, your weight. So yeah, she was always a little heavy growing up, but she was a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. And um, and it made me really um, sad growing up because obviously your mother is your first love. I mean, and your father, and your father, but your mother really—you're very close to her, and I was always fearful of her dying, and that was what really struck me and made me very passionate. When did you become aware, though? Like you're saying, you know, you were, you were worried, or it, it struck you were worried about her dying. You know, she was slightly overweight. Do you know, I'm sorry, my phone has just beeped, so I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> I apologize. I'm going to uh, put it on to silent now. You were saying that okay. your mom was overweight. When did you become aware that health related, sorry, that weight issues affected your health? Because that was quite a, an, that was quite a big perspective for such a young uh -huh. person at that age. Was there something that happened or that brought uh, you to that awareness so, so early? I think that, I think you just know. I think you know when something's bad for you. I think when you eat a lot of candy and your stomach hurts, like a lot of kids are doing right now, mm -hmm. it's Halloween here, they know that it's because they ate all that candy. So um, at a young age, I, I realized that eating certain foods just wasn't good for you. And I and I did more research. You know, there were, there were programs maybe that I saw um, on TV that said, here's the good foods you should eat. And I realized that's not the food that I'm eating at home. You know, I ate a lot of boxed processed foods. I, um, I ate a lot of McDonald's. So um, I saw at a young age, I mean, I think everybody knows that fries aren't good for you. Yeah. You know, McDonald's in general isn't good for you, except for if you make some healthier choices. But even that, you walk a fine line there. So um, you are aware as a child the differences between good and bad. And, and when I watched my mom, as I grew up, suffer from these health-related diseases, um, gaining more weight because of the food she ate, not being able to take hikes with us, not being able to participate in certain activities, you know, getting that, the diabetes in her 20s and, and a stroke in her 30s and a heart attack in her 40s and a kidney transplant when she was 49, wow. I mean... Obviously, if you see a woman who is crazy ambitious and beautiful, and um, but yet she doesn't take time to exercise, or she doesn't take time to really um, watch what she eats, um, you know that there's a huge connection here and a disconnection with mm -hmm. what success is in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, yeah. And I mean, what do you enjoy most about working out? I mean, because I work out a lot myself. I'm a yogi, <laughs> and so I do a lot of yoga, but... I love yoga. I hate getting on my mat, but once I'm there, I love it. Like, but for you, what is it? What's the drive and the motivation underneath? You know, what really gets you going about working out? You know, funny you say yoga. I'm, I'm not a big fan of yoga. Mm -hmm. I do <laughs> and I, yoga. Only because, only because, yeah, I need to do different types of yoga. I mean, I think it's, I probably would like yoga actually. And I've changed too throughout the years. Mm -hmm. But honestly, like most people, it's tough for me to work out. I don't want to go run on that treadmill in the morning. Yeah. But what makes me driven and disciplined, just like starting a business or um, or anything in life, that's it's going to be hard before it gets better. And for me, it was about setting goals. So um, what drives me when I work out is wanting to lose, you know, that weight, that baby weight to get my tummy back. And I, I set short-term goals. So um, I don't focus on the, um, the six training sessions that I planned um, that week. I focus on that hour that I have to complete today. And even sometimes just 20 minutes when I don't want to work out, I just say, okay, let me just try this for 20 minutes right. and just be as focused as possible. So it's not very easy for me sometimes to work out. What drives me is the goals that I set and also, you know, the aspirations that I have, whether it be to take a really great shot with my boys, you know, like photo shoot or, or yeah. the fear I have of not fitting in a dress for somebody's wedding. So people are motivated by pain and pleasure. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a psychological um, knowing that people say, right? And so for me, at a young age, what motivated me was my pain, was that fear 
uh, becoming like my mom. Mm-hmm. And these days, what's motivating me is a lot of pleasure, you know, the pleasure of wanting to feel good and to grow older with my kids. Yeah, and you've built the persistency as well. And it's interesting yeah. because you were saying there, um, I just want to touch on, you were saying that, you know, you whatever workouts you had planned for the week. And I've, I've noticed that um, in a lot of the research I was doing, one of the biggest things that people seem to, um, one of the biggest problems people seem to have with you is that, or they say like, you must have no time with your children whatsoever. You must just spend all your time working out and you're a bad yeah. mother because you never, you yeah. must never see your children. What's your answer to that? Well, that's crazy because I'm a stay-at-home working mom. I see my kids all the time. Sometimes they're on my, you know, they're with me at my meetings. Actually, most of the time, I think it's ludicrous because I, you know, as a mother, and and I've seen other overweight mothers who've used this excuse. I think that they've used that excuse for a long time, and that's what makes them comfortable. You know, I brought out an insecurity and um, really opened up, uh, you know, opened up a conversation that you know what I'm a mother too, and. And they're pretty much saying, well, I'm a mother and I'm, I'm a better mother than you mm-hmm. because I'm overweight. And I don't think that's the message we should be sending our kids. The truth is, is that it only takes 30 to 60 minutes of a good, intense workout to um, be in good shape. Not only that, but it's your nutrition. It's what you're doing 80% of the time. It's what you're eating when you feed your kids. Mm-hmm. You know, because I hope you're feeding yourself and you're feeding your kids because that's what I do. I right. plan their meals and I plan mine. So I, I think it's hurtful when people say that I'm a bad mom and that I neglect my kids. But unfortunately, that's just how people are. You know, when you have an insecurity, you try to make yourself feel better by saying you're better at something else. Right. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of moms think. And that shouldn't be the case. You should be taking care of your health because you love your family and you love your kids and, and you should love yourself. So and not in a narcissistic way, but in a healthy way because I wish my mom loved herself a little bit more, mm. it's just so that I could spend more years with her. Mm. And, um, and, you know, it's really unfortunate. I really hope she lives until she's 60, which is really a sad and hurt, you know, painful thing to say. Yeah. Did you see your mom being unhappy? This is just as a sideline. But, again, a lot of the stuff that I read, you know, that I've researched of people saying negative stuff about you has been – People saying, you know, oh, well, just, you know, but I'm just because you're fit and you're whatever, it somehow implies that you're not happy or somehow implies that if you are slightly more round and motherly and whatever, that you're happier. So going back, going, just taking the mom example, not wanting to dwell too much on your mom because this interview isn't about her, but was she happy growing up or? I don't mind you talking about my mom mainly because she's my motivation and she's my drive and this is where a lot of this passion stems from. From. Mm-hmm. My mom was not unhappy. Let's just say that. In fact, I some people who are overweight, I think, are not unhappy enough. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> if you, you know, Lao Tzu, you know, which is a famous philosopher, once said, you know, you only get better when you're tired of being sick. Right. So um, I think that she is was is probably going through a lot of underlying deep, deep issues as to why she has a certain lifestyle. I mean, habits are really hard to break. But like a lot of people right now, especially in America, there's a body acceptance movement, which I think is fabulous. I think that you should not just compare yourself with the photoshopped um, images and magazines. But at the same time, um, you know, you need to be aware that being a certain weight is not healthy for you yeah. in the long run. I think I think you should definitely not bully people who um, are a different size than you. But you need to realize that. Being healthy requires you to exercise and eat right, and however your body manifests and crosses, that's how it does. Um, my mother was, she was a very proud, overweight woman, just like a lot of people out there. And um, she made, she had to insecurities because everybody does. I do too, but um, she she covered it up with her success. She covered it up with the, the the things that she bought, the things that made her feel happy about herself. So. Um, and I, when I say happy about herself, I'm meaning, you know, nice clothes or right. a nice jewelry or a nice handbags, things that kind of um, cover up how you really feel, which is a level of insecurity, which is, you know, preventing you from becoming more disciplined and things you really aspire to become, which for a lot of people is a fit human being. So, um, yeah, um, she didn't really show a lot of um, negativity towards her body so much. I, knew, I know she had experienced a lot of diets, but... Um, I don't think that she, like I said, yeah. 
was really unhappy enough to want to change. No, and yeah. not even after she had, you know, experienced yeah. her health issues. Yeah, well, that's it's a beautiful point you make, and I also wanted to touch on something you said because I think this is an issue for a lot of people, and I really want to bring it to light here is that you're not saying with your message and with everything you're putting out there. It's I, I think people get mixed up between the the health related message. And they're making it about what you judging people are saying you're good or bad. There's no message out there saying because you're overweight, you're bad. And because you're overweight, yeah. you're, you're, you should be ashamed or you are less yeah. than or I'm better than you because I'm thin. I think that a lot of people are getting mixed up in this kind of thing and making it about that rather than what you're actually saying is you are when you're healthier, you, you can live a better life. You will live longer. You will be fitter, you will be able to run with your kids more, you'll be able to do more, but you will live a, a longer, potentially better, healthier, fitter, happier life when yeah. you're fit. It's not about whether you're good or bad, or right or wrong, or yeah. whether you should be ashamed or not shamed. It's about the health aspect. Yeah, I think that a lot of people, it's an open-ended question, what's your excuse, right? But I think that a lot of people who are secure have a very open, loving, accepting energy. You know, they don't and the people that um, saw it in a negative way, and again, this is, a, every, you know, people took it however they wanted to, but they, most people who are um, negative have a very limited, closed energy. Mm -hmm. So when people are closed-minded, they are very defensive, mm -hmm. and they see everything as an attack. And I think that's what, you know, when they saw the words, what's your excuse, um, they saw it as, what's your excuse? Mm -hmm. And it, it's really, again, that dialogue that's going in that person's head. So, you know, there are people who are open, who are going to be, who are going to live a great limitless life, you know, they're going to see, you know, a caption like, what's your excuses, what's your excuse, yeah. now here's me, I can do it, so can you, and then there's going to be people who are closed and closed-minded and see it as a, an attack and say, what's your excuse, and then, and then a lot of excuses will come out. So, um, you know, it's unfortunate, everyone gets, I mean, sometimes I'm closed also, and sometimes yeah. I'm open, I'm not always happy all the time. But um, hopefully at the, in the end, and hopefully the, some of the naysayers have seen some of my interviews and have followed some of my writings and have said, you know what, she's not a bad person and she has the similar challenges as I do. And maybe my excuses are a little bit invalid. And you know what, maybe I can become a, a better person physically and, pers and, you know, and intimately with myself. I, I can become a better person because I'm going to use this image and I'm going to be, I'm going to take it into a positive action. And it's very hard for people to admit, I mean, even I'm trying on what you're saying, okay, and I'm trying it on, it, you know, given my own experiences as a mother and as, you know, a fitness, whatever, and I'm thinking, and even whenever you say the word closed-minded, even though I know what you mean, there's a little tiny part of me that goes, I'm not closed-minded, you know, like I want to defend it, I want to be like, you know, there's, a, there's this uh -huh. little part of me that pops up, but but even by saying closed-minded, like we've all been there. We are there in certain areas yeah. of our lives. It's not yeah. a it's not an attack. It's not a, yeah. a negative comment. It's not a judgment. It's just mm -hmm. it's just more. I correct me if I'm wrong, but what it's more for you of a recognition of here's an area of my life where I'm really open and I'm probably very successful in this area. Here's an area of my life where I may be a little more closed, i.e., fearful. And maybe this isn't such a successful area in my life. So what would it take for me to have success in this area? So if I'm a little insecure yeah. over my weight or I'm a little insecure over how I'm feeling or I've never really been able to lose weight and I don't feel like I have a lot of possibilities in that area because I've never yeah. done it, so I don't really have self-esteem, yeah. Yeah. I, I would feel more limited there, which would therefore yeah. be more closed. Is that what you're trying to say? Is that what you're trying to say? It's not There's... closed isn't a judgment. Closed is just more a state of oh, mind. I... I'm following you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Actually, I, you know what's funny is that every single time um, I'm listening to you talk, and I'm thinking, we are kindred spirits, because every <laughs> single time you say something, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say something about it. That's so right. I feel the same way with you. Limited. You know, it's true. And it's unfortunate, but hopefully this opens their eyes. I agree with everything that you said. That's perfect. And I say, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm as you, I, I'm trying no, you on. you did a good job. I'm trying you on as, as, a, as a mother, as a, you know, Someone who struggles, yeah. with whatever. Okay. Oh, I have so much stuff I want to ask you. Let me see. Okay. I just want to talk briefly about your bulimia because you've been very open yeah. about you have been bulimic in the past. And I think I read somewhere that, you know, it, for years it was normal for you to make yourself, you know, sick maybe six to ten times a day, every day. Not 
six to, maybe six to ten times a week. A week? Um, Sorry, maybe, maybe three, I misinterpreted. Two to three times a day. Um, I was a little shocked times. by that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, that does, but that does happen, though, you know? I think that um, at that time period, I was going through a huge transition. Mm -hmm. I, I graduated college. I moved out of the house, went to moved to San Francisco, which is two hours away from here. I um, changed jobs, you know, broke up with my long-term boyfriend, was dealing with a lot of control um, issues. I was losing my self, sense of self. I was 22 at the time, and it was really a hard transition. I mean, everyone ha battles their own personal demons, and I was a perfectionist growing up. Mm -hmm. And I, I developed this perfectionism because... I was, a, I was like a little mommy to my siblings. You know, my mom was a young mom. She worked a lot. I was the eldest girl of three, but there were four children in our family. And so I, um, yeah, as chaotic as my world seemed, I always cleaned up the house so it would be perfect. I'd make sure the vacuum lines and the rug were perfect. And everything about my life was all about achieving a level of perfection. And as you know, there's no such thing as perfect. So at the time, um, I really started to focus on food and exercise and creating these unrealistic expectations of, you know, don't eat more than 30 grams of carbs a day or, you know, don't eat this much sugar. And uh, it stems from, again, genetics. My mom had an eating disorder. I always believe 30% of your life is genetics. And then also um, influenced by, you know, there's a, what's huge right now is bikini competitions, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you see that in the UK, um, UK yes. but it's just... It's crazy. There's a lot of bikini contests, and bigger contests, and I, I'm proud to say that I, you know, I was in this bikini California. I, mm -hmm. you know, I was in the very early stages of all these contests. But what they teach you, and what's unfortunate when you see these fitspiration posters of um, these women with six pack abs, is that they're taking that photo maybe um, a day or two um, within the competition. They don't usually look like that. You know, they they're over exercising. They're starving themselves. They're um, they're not healthy. They're probably at their unhealthiest point when they compete, and that's a that's an eye opener. People don't wow. realize. I can talk forever about that, but you know, when I started having bulimic tendencies is after my contest. I competed in six contests in one year. I was Miss Philippines USA. I competed in Manila. I um, was Miss Bikini California. I placed top five in two national fitness competitions. So my body was pretty tired and it was pretty weak, and, I, my, and my mental state was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. So all this coming together. I developed bulimia and um, and disordered eating, and I couldn't really hold down anything. I um, it, this happened for I want to say three or four years. I'm not keeping count, but it was a very hellish state to be in, especially when you pride yourself on being disciplined and being right. in control. And um, this is an area where I really felt out of control. So um, you know, with bulimia and for people who suffer from it, I mean, I understand intimately what you're going through. I understand what it is to hate yourself and to really focus too much on the past because every single time you eat something, even if it was just five minutes ago and you're focusing on it, that's the past. Yeah. Um, and, and it was it was horrible. Um, you know, there's so much stuff I could say about this subject and how I recovered. And um, I, I did recover, obviously. How, how did recovered. you recover? How did you recover? I recovered through, it took time. Mm -hmm. It took time every because every day I woke up and I said, I'm going to perfect today. I'm not going to throw up. I'm not going to overeat. And, but, um, but of course that didn't happen. And right. what, what really changed was my mindset. It was me waking up and saying, I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to, you know, uh, you know, make myself upset because I didn't, um, work out today or if I didn't eat a certain amount of calories or, or whatnot. I just told myself that imperfection is perfect and that every day is progress and that um, perfection is in the progress so um i just i would post these quotes all around my apartment you know and i would um pray a lot and i um, really relied on some really good friends who helped mentor me out of this process i mentored other people online um and that's one thing i always tell people if you want to attain a goal right. you need to find a mentor yeah. to help lead you out of the pain you're in whether it's to lose weight or to get out of that eating disorder but also mentor people underneath you because those those are what those are the people that are going to um, you're going to want to make you proud and be a so, role um, Yeah, just like it when you lose weight. I mean, you, sometimes your kids are your you know or their supporters and the people mm -hmm. underneath you that you, you want to make proud. So I just found I started helping other people, and when I serviced other people, I started um, letting go of 
uh, focusing on myself, right. which I think is another bad thing. Don't focus on yourself. Focus on uh, servicing other people who are dealing with this kind of same pain as you, and you will start to become a better person. You just do. So it took years, and, and I did recover, and I did, you know, gain 30 pounds in my recovery and stayed that way for several years after. But um, I remembered in that recovery that I needed to love myself, and I needed to love myself whether I was 150 pounds or if I was 130 or 115, which I was when I competed. But um, I remember that if I love myself and I start showing that to my body, you know, that I'm going to nurture you and I'm going to love you and I'm going to feed you good foods, that, um, that it, you know, love heals all things and it healed me. Talk us, Maria, about then coming down. You said you went, you gained 30 pounds. Talk us then coming from there to where you are now, because I'm an OCD perfectionist. I'm with you all the way. And no matter how much I tell okay. myself, no matter how much I say, you've got to love yourself and accept yourself. And uh, yeah. It's the message that I, I teach and I push yeah. and I, I'm so great at encouraging other people to do that. And yeah. it's so tough to do it myself. So, you know, uh -huh. was there a different motivation that took you from the 30 pounds overweight to where you are now? Are you in a different place now to when you were competing in the bikini competitions? You're still hard on yourself, I imagine, because we don't change that much. I'm still hard on myself. Change psych psychologically for you, or what, what? What took you from there to here that makes it a good thing? Like, what inspire me? So, I mean, I think that I'm still in, yeah, still the same person. I'm still the same person who won those contests. I'm very determined, very disciplined, right. very in control. Um, the difference is, is that I am not going to utilize food as um, a factor in my control. Um, so what happened was I was 155 pounds at the heaviest when I met my husband. Here goes my son. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Bring him up. Uh, when I um, we love seeing them. Bring him up. <laughs> he'll be he'll be two in December. So when I met my husband, I was 145 pounds, mm -hmm. and um, and then I became unexpectedly pregnant. And at my heaviest, I was 180 pounds. And then um, after I gave birth, I started with the whole process again of just eating right and exercising and loving my body. And I do have to say that when I became pregnant, I realized, wow, this is what my body was truly created for. I mean, there's this human being growing my belly. How miraculous is that? So I did my research. I knew I didn't have, I didn't have to eat for two, just right. 300 to 500 yeah. extra calories, and keep up with my routine, you know, yeah. um, which was still with training and cardio. And I, um, and then after I gave birth, I continued my healthy habits, and then all of a sudden, my body just, it just recalibrated. It, it just, just started back. to respond because for a long time after my eating disorder, it didn't respond. Mm -hmm. It um, it just wouldn't budge. I couldn't. I would do cardio twice a day, and I wouldn't lose an ounce. It was in shutdown mode. It was like, it was no, I need mode. everything in case you're gonna starve yeah. me again. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's fine. It's fine. Do, let's let's take a pause. We'll take a pause for a minute. Okay, and then after I had my child, I went back to my healthy habits of just eating and, and exercising, right, you know, and it just, my body recalibrated. It just So, um, it just recalibrated, and all of a sudden, I just started to drop weight, um, like I used to before before my eating disorder. So, it's again, that healthy habits is what um, helped that weight loss, and obviously a healthy mentality. And then I re and then I found out I was pregnant again. <laughs> you know, when my son was six months old, and I just oh my god. So yeah. and then I, and then I was pregnant again. So it's just it's really about having those healthy habits beforehand, before you're um, before you get pregnant, and then remembering to um, work out and eat right while you're pregnant, and to and to be, be kind to yourself after you have kids because it is tough, and your life does change, and mm -hmm. your time management totally changes. Right. So. Um, you know, I always tell people it takes nine months to have a, you know, build a baby in your belly, and, and it usually takes that equal amount of time to, you know, to get back into shape. Yeah, I agree. I fully agree. And you must be a time management ninja to uh, do everything you have to do, which is why you can't work out because you schedule it into your into your day. So yeah, if it ain't scheduled, it isn't real. I say that all the time. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. if you schedule it in, yeah. it gets done. Well, it's more chance of getting done. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I schedule my workouts usually early morning. I'm, tr I'm trying to schedule my workout after this, this interview, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go work out real quick, and then I'm going to bring my kid to school. I mean, I'm always thinking about when am I going to be able to go to my care home, which, you know, I own two care homes. Mm -hmm. I work from home. So I always think, when am I going to be able to go to my care home? When am I going to go to the gym? 
when I'm going to take the kids to the park, or what am I going to cook dinner? I mean, I think about all that, just like any mother does the day before, the, the night before, and I'm trying to see how am I going to manage it all. It's all about scheduling, like you said. It's about planning. And then one of my favorite quotes is, if you, if you fail to plan, plan to fail. So, mm -hmm. there. Yes. You know, my success is in my planning. Yes, I love it. Who was that, Ted? That was it. Benjamin, was it Franklin? Benjamin Franklin? Fail to plan, no. plan to fail? Oh, is somebody... I can't remember who it was. Okay, well, listen, I'm not going to keep you much longer. There is one thing that I want to, to touch on, and I've, because I've seen this come up a lot, and I know you're going to have a great answer for it. <laughs> a lot of women have said, or mothers have said, that because you only have boys, because you just talked about your kids, so I want to bring them up. Really? Because you only have boys, if you had a girl, it would be different. If you had had a girl, you wouldn't have put that picture up saying, what's your excuse? Because you wouldn't want to encourage her to have body issues. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? That is a very good question. I've never been asked that before. <laughs> do you think you, know you would have thought differently? Absolutely not. Right. If I had a girl, if I had five girls, I'd be putting all those five girls in that picture and saying, what's your excuse for not working out, not making yourself a priority? Um, I think that it's important to, teach, to be a role model, first and foremost, for your children. And it's important to exercise and to eat healthy and however your body manifests, that's how it, it's beautiful and that's how it looks. My body manifests the way it did in that picture eight months after having my kids from having healthy habits. I think that I'm teaching my children, my boys, and especially maybe their, maybe their friends at school who are girls, that it's important to take care of yourself, you know, as a, as a future woman, as a future mother, it's important that you don't lose yourself in the process of becoming a mother, which, which is what a lot of mothers do. Right. And at the same time, you know, have some healthy role models out there. Don't um, don't aspire to be like that photoshopped thin model who models for Versace out there. I mean, that might be a little unrealistic, but I have a very healthy body. I'm not. I don't have a six pack in that photo. I, I have tone in my house, which mm -hmm. is which is great. A lot of people who are healthy do. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not incredibly skinny. I'm a real mom. I have priorities. I have obligations. I work. I don't have a nanny. I can juggle a lot of priorities and still make myself, make my health a priority. So I think that I'm a great role model for mothers today and for our future moms. So for people who say that any, something would have changed had I had a daughter, I think BS, you know. My mom had um, three daughters, me being one of them. And I, I wish she was more of a fitness role model for me. But you know what? It motivated me to inspire other right. moms and inspire other people to make better choices. That's sometimes the way, isn't things. it? It's, it takes a negative to really invoke a positive. Yeah, at that point. Yeah. Yeah. What are your plans for the future, Maria? What do you, you know, like you have a massive amount of publicity now. I see your, your Facebook page when I first contacted you was like 25, 30,000, and it's like 200,000 now. So. Yeah. I hope all of them are genuine likes and you haven't, you know, and I, got a, you know, a bunch of haters on there who are wasting their energy. That would be very sad. Yeah, you know, I, in the last couple of weeks I've received, you know, nearly a million people on my website, you know, which is a great thing. I think it's important that people look into deeper into the person that, um, that they're seeing on their TV, which is great. Because if you go to my website, you see that I'm a pretty transparent person. I talk openly about my depressions, my struggles on my success, and I give a lot of tips. So where do we go from here? You know, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing, which is, you know, I'm going to have a loud voice when it comes to being a fitness advocate. Um, I'm going to continue writing as I usually do, probably finally publish my online free fitness book that I actually created for my followers this year. I'm going to, you know, there's a lot of opportunities. Um, we'll see. I, um, I hope that my nonprofit grows. I hope that I can provide more free programs for um, communities that need it and I hope that the uh, people will see that you know fitness isn't all about being a gym it's about making time it's about what you're eating it's about you know being at the park with your kids and not being on your iPhone you know it's about um, it's about life you mm -hmm. need to be moving and it's changed a lot in this 21st century people aren't moving enough so no. I'm going to continue spreading the positive message of fitness and hopefully that translates to you know a lot of other physical success, whether it be a TV show, whether it be, you know, books or DVDs or, you know, products. I actually have a product coming out 
it's called the belly ball um it's been in the production for the last year so i'm excited for that to come Wonderful. out but um Great. yeah so lots yeah of, because lots I mean, of fun things. like i said out of every negative comes a positive and even though there has been a lot of negativity um around you know the picture and you at the minute there's also you know you you also now have the opportunity to touch a lot more people's lives with your yeah. message and you know and, and for every person that's been negative there's been two that have been inspired and, and for I every person that was negative there were to me there were eight that were inspired wow. I mean I'd say majority was inspirational a lot of people took it in a positive way I mean I've been receiving emails from India from Australia from Peru Colombia Ireland I mean it's been crazy how much this single photo has influenced and impacted a worldwide discussion about fitness and your own health so I'm excited that these people decided today to work out because they thought now I realize that it is possible I can do this and I will do this that's great and I always quote Seth Godin and he says uh, I don't know the I can't remember the exact quote I won't do it justice but he says that you know when you put yourself out there you have in yeah. life you really have two choices you can put yourself out there and know you will be judged or you can just blend in with the crowd and say nothing and have no one judge you. Yeah. And so you can't have yeah, it both ways. Problem. You can't put yourself out there and not be judged. Yeah. People will judge. But it's, yeah. it's about really just... You have to have a strong... Yeah, you have to have a strong foundation of right. who you are and what your beliefs are. And you'll see... You've seen on my website. I mean, I've really developed my convictions throughout the years. And so all this hoopla about people disliking it, people hating me. I mean, I don't... It doesn't really phase me. I don't... I, I think my head I'm gonna pray for you because I really hope that you do take I really hope you take care of your health <laughs> no that's wonderful and now just as a final thing Maria before we go if you had a tagline what would it be I know I'm throwing you oh. on the spot if you had a tagline Maria Kang what's your excuse <laughs> Okay, I wasn't. I totally wasn't prepared for that at all. <laughs> oh, that's so amazing. What's your excuse? What's yeah, your I think excuse? that's a good tagline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I walked right into that one. No, that is brilliant. Listen, Maria, you have been wonderful. This is absolutely amazing. Now I'm going to end the interview now, but don't go because I want to say goodbye to you um, after we we stop the video. But thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. I'm so glad we finally got around to doing it. And personally, I just want to say that I think. I always have thought and I continue to think that you are inspiring and I think you are a wonderful role model for children, for girls, for women, certainly for me and for a lot of the moms who are members of my network. I mean, the overwhelming response has been positive. People saying, I think she's amazing. You know, I think that that is totally something I would aspire to. I believe it's possible. And I think that your yeah. message has reached a lot of people in a positive way. And thank you for the time today and um, I know you're a busy mom and this has been tough for you it's like 7 30 in the morning so that's okay <laughs> that's time management for you you say you don't have time 7 30 yeah, in the morning you find time for everything she yeah. has her hair blow dried yeah. she's about to get on the treadmill you see it, it is possible so you don't have yeah. an excuse okay Maria thank you so much and this was Kim Constable from the Work at Home Mums Network. You can subscribe if you're not a free member to the Work at Home Mums Network, workathomemumsnetwork.com. Maria's interview will be archived in the site as well as on YouTube. So you'll be able to see it, share it with all your friends, put the message out there. There is no excuse. If you want to be fit and healthy, for fit and healthy's sake, you can be. It's Maria, thank you so much. I really hope that um, we see, see each other again soon. Yay. I'm so bad at ending interviews. I don't want you to go. I'm like, I keep talking. I'm so Irish. I keep talking and talking and talking because I'm like, okay, I'm going to press stop now. Maria, see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.